you might notice something a little bit different about the image that you are seeing. That's right. I've had a haircut. Welcome back everyone to more from the Sable Eyes. I'm Mitch and my furniture's finally here. All of my stuff has finally arrived. It's not organized yet in, in any way, shape or form, but I'm back on my desk. I'm feeling comfortable and I figured now's as good a time as any to take a look at Weeping Bell Salazzle. Let's jump across to PTCGO and check it out. So you've all seen this deck by now, I'm sure. It's been covered by a lot of people on PTCGO already, but I need to play it regardless because Weeping Bell is one of those cards that I need to tick off for the OG 150 challenge. Dangerous Mucus is its ability. It means that we both poison and burn our opponent's active Pokemon when we put this Pokemon in play. That pairs up really, really nicely with the brand new Derisive Roasting Salazzle, which deals 90 damage times the amount of uh, poison, what do you call it? Special conditions. I, I almost didn't get through it there. I almost couldn't say those words. Special conditions that are on your opponent's active. There'll be two from Weeping Bell, and then of course we also play four copies of Yellhorn as well, which will add confusion to the mix. That means that we can potentially deal three times nine, which is a pretty significant number. 270 damage plus the poison plus the burn is going to be 300 damage just from one twin energy. This list is a mixture of a whole bunch of other content creators, so if you've seen a list that looks similar, I'm not surprised. Let's see if we can't roast a couple of meta decks on PTCGO. Do you get it? Because of the name of the attack. Got to reorganize my uh, my little chair space and all the stuff behind me so that I'm actually doing stuff. All right, we've got a pretty solid start here, to be fair. We've got um, oh, we've got two Salandits, a Bellsprout, and a Mew. I'm going to attach to the benched Salandit uh, just in case. I don't know what we're playing against here. Mewtwo in the active could be literally anything. Uh, they've got an ADP deck box, so maybe we're seeing that. Maybe it's a Welder Mewtwo. Maybe it's the new Metal Mewtwo, which I know that has been covered by some people already. Looks like it is a Picarom deck, or at least something similar. Um, yeah, that seems like the way we're going to be going here. Mewtwo and Pikachu Zekrom. So we can easily knock out Picaroms if they play them down. Uh, Mewtwo is going to be a little bit more difficult. We will need... All three special conditions for both Pokemon, though. I was about to say it could be difficult with the Mewtwo if they put the Big Charm on, but as I said it, I realized that the Poison would deal the damage anyway. The Poison and the Burn would deal with it, so it's not too much of a problem. Alrighty. Now, I guess the question now becomes, can we take a knockout on this Bolton? Let's uh, let's give it a try. Um, we can scoop up the Salandit in the active, which will put the Salandit with the Twin Energy into the prime position. Let's play down the Weeping Bell. We will elect to burn and poison our opponent. I always find it funny when you're when PTCGO says, would you like to do the effect of this card? I was like, yeah, well, that's why I'm playing it. And we've managed to find both Yellhorn and Salazar, which is fantastic. Now, this is an important interaction, right? Because when you play Yellhorn, you make sure you play it before you play down the, uh, the Evolution, because Evolutions remove all of the special conditions. Uh, we've just had a really fantastic turn. We're going to take that knockout on Bolton really easily. We also managed to get the Weeping Bell scooped up, which means that next turn we can potentially use it again. And you notice those Brunos in my hand. I really like Bruno as a supporter card. I think it is really, really useful. I don't know if it's better than Research, Marnie, and Boss, but it does provide a little bit of extra draw in a deck that is going to lose Pokemon quite quickly. Like this one, Salazzles are going to be knocked out pretty pretty rapidly, frankly. So if, uh, if we get the maximum draw off of Bruno every time, shuffle into our deck and draw seven. That seems pretty good. They've knocked out the Salazzle. They're going to put all three energy onto the Mewtwo. That's the intelligent thing to do. And now we just need to find... I think we just need to find an energy. I think it is literally just an energy that we're looking for here. So let's play our Yellhorn down. We're going to... Uh, we're going to play down the Salazzle, remove our Confusion. Then we can Quick Ball. I think we Quick Ball away a Bruno. We can find something like Crobat, because all we need is energy. So we're going to try and draw it here. Um, we'll play down the Weeping Bell. That puts the Poison and the Burn on this Picarom. And now Crobat and Bruno, we're going to take a look at five cards off of Crobat and then seven off of Bruno. Look at that. We have managed to find the twin as well. Beautiful stuff. 
We'll play down the Bell Sprout and then shuffle away our hand and draw seven. This is looking pretty good. We can put the Salazzle down. I think it might just be worth attacking now. We don't really need to do too much else. We could scoop the Weeping Bell up, but I think it's fine um, leaving it in play. Let's take ourselves a knockout. We can answer one prize remaining. Um, and uh, we are in a really dominant spot. One prize left. Still playing with these Blastoise sleeves, by the way. I know the Team Challenge ones are out. I just haven't used them yet. I don't think they look too good. I mean, I've got them, but I'm not going to use them just yet. Now, I say this every video. We win the game if we don't get Marnie. To be honest, though, I don't know if Marnie's going to make that much of a difference. Uh, because as long as we draw into a supporter of some description, we should be fine. My real concern is Reset Stamp. Being stamped to one with this deck is going to be crippling. We do, of course, have the chance to draw a Quick Ball. We've left the Dene in the deck, so that is good. But we are in a little bit of an awkward spot if they find the Reset Stamp. So let me reiterate. I don't mind if I get Marnied. It would suck, but I don't mind. I do mind getting Reset Stamped here. Um, Picarom doesn't usually run... Does it? Does it? I can't even remember... Does it use Reset Stamp? I, I played this deck a lot. I can't remember. I assume it does. That's why I'm saying it. <laughs> it's one of those things where usually, if I'm remembering that these type of decks play those cards, they usually do. It's just a matter of whether this one does. Um, so they've played the Dene. That's really good because it gives us a win condition that doesn't involve finding the Yelhorn. If we find Gus, we can uh, get rid of that Dene. There's the Marnie. Like I said, not too worried about that. That shouldn't be too big of an issue. Because um, we are really likely to draw into supporters um, or quick balls, which is good. There we go. We've actually managed to find a bunch of supporters there. Um, so this is not too bad. That's horrific. Okay. They do play Reset Stamp. Um, we're in a little bit of strife now. That's not good. This is not a good card to have off of a Reset Stamp to one. It's okay, though. We're going to try and do our very, very best. We're going to try our very, very best to not lose this game after going 5-1 to one prizes in front. Um, I'm going to promote Mew, I think. That seems fine. Okay. We didn't immediately win the game by top-decking a draw supporter. Let's play down the Weeping Bell, put on some pressure onto this Mew too. Then I'm thinking, we do one of two things. We either leave the Mew in the active and... Um, risk them knocking it out and then full blitz into themselves and, and tag bolting and winning the game. Or, we could retreat with the U-turn board into the Bell Sprout because we've got a second one. I kind of want to hold the Bell Sprout in the hand though. Let's retreat into the Bell Sprout. Um, this one, I'm going to hold the Bell Sprout in the hand so that if we find Pokecom, we could eventually draw out of this terrible situation. Um, but putting this Bell Sprout in the active, I think it's the, um, it's the safest thing in my eyes. If they want to. Uh, they can knock that bell spread out no problems because they'll still have the poison and burn on them. Um, I've just realized they actually have Dedene on the bench with one energy already. So they could attach to that and retreat into the Dedene and attack. But we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait and see. See if our opponent spots that. Um, normally most people in this position... Uh oh, he spotted it. I was about to say normally most people in this position will just attack with the Mewtwo. Um, which would have given us the chance if we found the energy to just win the game. It looks like they are going for the Dede, though. So, the question now becomes... How do we go about winning this game? We can't use Weeping Bell next turn. So we cannot deal more than 90 damage. The most we can deal is 90. That will be by using a Yellhorn. So we cannot win the game this turn. We also need to top deck into something. I'm just assuming that we're going to get out of this. We have gotten out of it. Okay, this is fine. Uh, Pokecom, get rid of the Bellsprout. Let's grab ourselves our good friend, Dedene. We can use this to get out of our dead hand. Let's draw six cards here. We've found an Energy, we've found a Yellhorn, we've found a Boss, we've found a Bruno. I think... Huh, they're just going to give us the win. We couldn't win that turn. But I was, I'm fairly certain we would have got there. That's a, that's a pretty good victory. We'll see if we can't beat up on another meta deck. Alrighty, we've got ourselves another game. Unfortunately, we've started with Mew, but we've got a Com in hand, we've got a Quick Ball in hand. U-Turn board is good, Research is good. This hand is not terrible. Um, and it looks like Great Ball's a card that usually yep, only gets played in Eternatus. So this matchup will be very interesting. Firstly, we can't one-shot an Eternatus. We can't one-shot it, 
We can't even let the poison ticks deal with it coming back into our turn. Right, so Eternatus VMAX is actually really difficult for us to deal with, but it's not impossible. So we're going to give it a go. Uh, top deck of Pokemon, we didn't, we found a level ball though. Level ball, I, I haven't mentioned it yet, is a broken card in this deck. We can get all four of Bellsprout, Weeping Bell, Salazzle, and Salander, which is amazing. Let's play down the Bellsprout, we're going to quick ball away a research grab a Salandit with that quick ball. We may as well play the Yellhorn. It doesn't make a difference. Neither of the Pokemon in the active are relevant here, although we could potentially get a knockout with a Salazzle if that Crobat stays in play. Um, I'm thinking Bellsprout and Salandit with these two level balls that we've got in our hand. I don't mind that. We've got the Attacker, which is good. We've got a Dedenne, so I think that having two of both seems more than reasonable. Alrighty, that seems like a good turn. Considering my opponent's bad turn, this seems like a good turn. Next turn, if they don't do anything, we can boss up the Eternatus. Even though we won't be able to one-shot it, we'll be able to put some pressure on, which would be fantastic. Or, we can just knock out the Crobat in the active if we do manage to find that Weeping Bell. So we are still missing that one piece. They're going to want to put their E-turn in the active. So that would be really, really good for us. If they do that, then we can just dead our hand away um, and go from there. The good thing is we have access to an energy and an attacker, which is what you want in this kind of match, right? You want to make sure that your energy and attacker are in your hand at all times and that they don't get money away by your opponent because that would be really, really bad unless you happen to just draw back into them, in which case it's fine. We didn't, but it doesn't matter. We've got a Bruno. It's fine. I'm not too stressed. We've got the level ball as well, which can find the Salazzle or the Weeping Bell. I think the Weeping Bell is actually the smarter choice. I think this is going to be all right. I've played down a lot of Pokemon. No, no second E-turn, no second e There's the energy. So no second E-turn yet. Alright. So at least we can put pressure on the active here. We get our U-turn uh, turn board back. We can play down another Salandit. And then we can Bruno, which I, I do like to see. Um, I think we just promote the Salandit, right? That seems fine. That seems fine. Then, oh, another U-turn board. Excellent. Well, that's a card that doesn't need to be in the deck anymore, so we can just attach those to both of our Salandits. I think we're all good to go here. We can just chuck this little fella down. We're going to level ball. We're going to find Weeping Bell or Salazzle. I think Weeping Bell is the smarter option, uh, because if we miss the attack, we at least get the poison and burn damage off here. Yes, we would like to poison and burn, and then we'll Bruno shuffle for seven. Incredible card. What a good card. And we've found Salazzle and Energy, and we've actually found the uh, Yellhorn as well. So we're dealing the maximum amount of damage to this Eternatus here. This is actually very, very impressive. This is the most amount of damage that we could possibly deal, is 270 plus the burn and the poison is 300. I like it. Uh, they lose their burn, which sucks. I don't like that. We also have nothing in our hand, but our opponent doesn't know that, so they may Marnie us. And that's why Marnie's not that bad of a card, right? Just as often as you lose a good hand, you shuffle away a bad one. So, I don't know, I don't know if, it's, uh, if it's as bad as sometimes people make it out to be. People do sometimes fly off the handle with, uh, with Marnie. What are they doing here? They're just, um... They're just playing funny buggers with me, putting a spirit room in the active. Anguish Cry's not going to knock me out. Okay, uh... Well... Well... Top decking that twin energy gives us an interesting idea. I think we have to boss this E-turn up and knock it out. Seems more than reasonable. We could have gone for the Crobat, but I want to take three prizes. We can also scoop up a Weeping Bell if we'd like to. I'm also trying to... Well, do we want to... I think we just attached to the active. I don't think it really matters. Um, let's... Actually, no, we should scoop up the Weeping Bell, because that way... Um, oh, this would be funny, actually. If they put any more damage on that Spirit Tomb, we could potentially knock it out with the Poison and the Burn from Weeping Bell. So, we don't necessarily have to find anything this turn, but I would like to get something funny. Bruno and Research off of the prizes is very good for us, and... Our opponent doesn't have another powered Eternatus, which means that eventually we are going to be able to put on enough pressure that we don't need to stress too hard about what our opponent is doing here. 
Um, okay, so they're gonna derail to knock me out. That's an interesting course of action. Well, I mean, if they're gonna attack with a Veltal and derail me, then I'm just gonna boss out their Spiritomb and knock it out with Weeping Bell. I have no problem doing that. I've been given the opportunity to do that. I think it's perfectly reasonable. We'll put the Salandit in the active. They can't knock out a Salandit next turn. Down an energy, though. Oh, I should probably go for the shuffle or the draw. Uh, it's just... It's too nice. It's too nice to give up this gust. I can just do it. I'm just going to do it. This is objectively an incorrect play. So to the people that sit around at home and go, Man, I wish Mitch would just play perfectly. If I played perfectly, I wouldn't get knockouts on Spiritombs like this. Let's just pass into the knockout. I think that's going to be fine. We don't need to attach the energy, do we? No, I don't think so. We should retreat, though, into the Bell Sprout. Let's, let's let the Bell Sprout die. I don't care about the Bell Sprout. I actually probably should have cared about the Bell Sprout. It's fine. We took a prize. We took a prize, and that's all that matters, and it's a decent one as well. I think that play actually just completely destroys us, because now we have no way of parallel... of... of of powering up an attack this turn. I shouldn't have done that. I should have just knocked out the Aveltal. Or I should have at least just gone for the knockout on the Aveltal and just sacrificed the Salazzle. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, well, doesn't matter. They don't have an Eternatus. Eventually, they're going to slow down here. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. Let's, um... Oh, a Yellhorn. That's not enough to knock this Eveltal out, but it is enough to frustrate him. Let's attach to the Salandit. I'm going to scoop up one of these Weeping Bells here. We'll put the Bell Sprout back down, and then we can Bruno. I think that's fine. Shuffle Draw 7 seems pretty good. Okay. I've just clunked my desk. Let's scoop up the Weeping Bell again. We can play down the Bell Sprout. Um, and if we want to, we could deal some damage with our Salandit or Salazzle. I think it's actually fine, though, to just leave this. I think it's fine. Let's just pass. I don't really... I don't really know what I'm doing anymore. Oh my god, I just realised that they can knock out the Salandit with Clutch if they if they clutch it out. Man, this the end of this game has just been an absolute disaster. And the Crushing Hammer. Talk about... Talk about bad news bears. Goodbye, Twin Energy. We're getting marnie See? I don't mind getting marnie being Marnie's not that big of a deal. I don't care that I lose both of my Weeping Bells and an energy. Because it could give me something better than that hand. Which it didn't. Okay, I'm starting to think that maybe my misplays, uh, though good for content, are bad for my win-loss record. Our Salazzle still isn't dead. We top-decked a boss. We don't need that boss. Let's uh, let's ordinary rod back in a Salandit and a Salazzle. We're definitely going to need those. Um, I think oh, there's so much stuff. Uh, then we can yell horn. I think that's fine. Just yell horn here, and uh, then we either scoop up the Salandit or just research. I don't think that the damage on the Salandit ever matters. Um, oh my word. Um, let's play down the Salandit. This hand is so bad, we cannot afford the Dede three energies away, surely not. I think there's only like two more left in the deck after that. I think that we've got... How many is it? One? Yeah, I can't afford to get rid of this hand, we just have to pass. This is one hell of a piece of content, guys. We are playing Pokemon cards. They're going to get the knockout. Ooh, they're gonna boss. They're gonna boss the Bell Sprout. Oh my god, that's actually really bad. We need to find another Bell Sprout now. At least they knock it out. At least they take a knockout. That means that Bruno is live. We cannot detonate this hand away. We need to Bruno. That's better to Bruno for seven instead of four. So we we look at the positives and we top deck a Weeping Bell. I'm fine with shuffling that away. That's not a problem. Poison and burn the Eveltal. Bruno. Bruno. Um, Salazzle, energy, um, okay, okay, Salazzle, we've got the Salazzle, I don't think they can knock out my active Salazzle next turn, 
They can knock out a Salandit. They could also knock out a Bellsprout. Let's Quick Ball, though. I think I get rid of the Dead A. Oh, my God. I've got no supporters left. Oh... Oh my god, there's 14 cards. Maybe I have to get rid of the Dene. Oh, the Mewtwo's so useful. Oh, but I don't want to play it next turn. Oh my goodness. I just need a, I just need a, a Bell Sprout. Nah. Oh, just get rid of the Dene, it's fine. Um, we've got Crobat, it's it's fine. We've got Crobat. Let's play down the Bell Sprout. Let's leave the Mewtwo, I think, just in case, and take the knockout. This has become a disaster, all from that silly play. Quick Ball. Okay, that, that's a Crobat. Now all we need to do is hope that that Bellsprout stays alive. If the Bellsprout stays alive, we have a chance to win. Heads on the Crushing Hammer means that now us not denying that hand away was a really good idea. Uh, because now we actually have energy left in the deck. We would have had one energy left in the entire deck if we had a Dedenade on that turn. Alright. Uh, this is stressful. I don't like it. Should have just knocked out the Eveltal earlier. And I could have done the funny meme knockout on the Spiritomb later. Later. This has been this has been a very very strange strange episode, but you know what? It's April first, so that's what you. That's my April Fool. I am the April Fool for you. I'm your April Fool, so that you don't have to be. Research is not a boss. Our Bell Sprout is going to survive, ladies and gents, and that means if we find a Weeping Bell and an Energy. We will win this game. Alright, here we go. We're gonna... Oh, Pokecom. Okay, that's pretty good. Pokecom guarantees the Weeping Bell. I was about to say we can Quick Ball for the, uh, for the Crobat, but we don't have to. Let's play the Weeping Bell. We are looking for one energy. We're gonna draw seven off of the research. Seven out of twelve cards. We know that there's at least three triple accelerations in there. We didn't see any of them, but we found the twin... Which means that we device a derisive roast that of Eltul for 180. And I tell you what, ladies and gents, that's not the way I expected that game to go. But we beat Picarom and Eternatus, and we beat them both in a row. Most importantly, though, we get to knock that Weeping Bell off of the OG150 challenge. It was a card that I was actually genuinely afraid of playing with because I didn't expect it to be so good. But it turns out that it pairs so nicely with Salazzle, I cannot complain. And also, can't complain about this. Thank you very much to all of my channel members. There are so many of you now. There's about 45. I really appreciate the support. Five more members means that I get to put up a new emote for you to use in the comments. So if you'd like to become a member, join down below. You can join the likes of Dadbod, Azazel, Fernando, Yolo, Diego, Steven, Agent Abel, Austin, and Josiah uh, on that left-hand side there who are giving up to 50, oh, over $15 a month, which is fantastic. I really genuinely appreciate that. And then the people in the white... Mega Sableyes over there, five bucks a month. Only three dollars if you want to just be a regular, regular member. It costs less than a cup of coffee, you know. Just take, if you if you could drop it on the ground and you and you felt fine, just not not having that money, then I could have that money. But I don't. I'm not going to pressure you to do it. It's not a problem. If you don't want to do it, yeah, I'm not going to make you do it. I'm your mum. Oh, this video is still recording. Uh, I'd better actually wrap it up here. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming along. If you are watching at the end, make sure you leave a like. So I know. Comment down below something silly so that I, I know that you were watching at the end. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I have furniture now. It's very exciting. Bye.